Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Cameron Nimla. Just like all you guys out there, love riding dirt bikes, but honestly, I probably like working on it more. So back here, we have a 2003 CR250 that I'm building. And in today's video, we are gonna be fixing up a couple things on it and bolting on some new parts. So stay tuned for that. But right now, I figured I'd give you guys a little update on health stuff since it's been a minute. And I like to keep you guys updated on all that stuff. So if you want to skip through all this, go to the timestamp shown on the screen right now. So I finished up what should have been my last treatment uh, February 14th. So over, let's see, almost two months ago now. And uh, been doing really good. Back to 100%, feel really good at this point. But uh, we went over to Seattle a few weeks ago to try to get like a second opinion on everything. For those of you that don't know, I was diagnosed with leukemia back in July of last year. And I went through eight months of treatment, uh, was cleared, everything was good to go. Um, so we went for the second opinion a few weeks ago in Seattle. It's about a four or five hour drive from where we are here in Spokane. And uh, they basically recommended that I do two years of what they call a maintenance therapy. And what that entails is once a month chemo, pills once a day, and this whole regimen is for two years. So I was pretty bummed about it. Honestly, I thought I was completely done with treatment. But you know what? It gives me um, just like a little extra insurance policy, I guess you could say, uh, from ever coming back. So, you know, I don't really have a choice. Um, it's a no-brainer to do it. Honestly, it's not going to be that hard. It's going to be just... Uh, really low dosage so nothing too crazy but I've had a few other things happen too I needed surgery it's like a little biopsy it's like a minor surgery I had that on my hip yesterday and uh, that knocked me out pretty good and then next week on Tuesday I have surgery on my chest here to put a port in for that uh, that maintenance therapy so a couple little bumps in the road nothing too crazy but we will uh, we're still we're still pushing hard and you know, it ain't gonna stop me. So, you know, I'm just finishing the last couple little things left over from this whole um, this whole journey. So appreciate all you guys' support and uh, we'll be back and healthy better than ever. So let's get to work on the 250 now. Oh, and one more thing, check out this dirt stash I got going on here. Pretty sweet, huh? I'm just stoked that I'm finally growing some hair back. It's kind of weird though. It's only like growing back around here. Not a whole lot on the side. Got a little bit of hair up top here, but uh, yeah, I'm just really excited that I'm finally getting some hair. So in a few months from now, you should see a bunch of hair gains. So if you guys saw the last video I did on the 250, we ran into a couple issues here, nothing too crazy. The first being the clutch pull was a little bit stiff. So I've got some ideas to try on fixing that. And then this pipe I have here, the DPR cone pipe, wasn't fitting the greatest. A uh, couple issues we had with it were, let's see, back here, this mount is a little crooked. That mount's a little crooked, and the Kickstarter is hitting the pipe. So I am going to try a couple things to fix that. So for the clutch issue, a few people suggested to try an OEM cable. Got uh, this cable from Rocky Mountain, and a few of these washers. So these washers go underneath the pressure plate. I'll explain the theory behind that. But uh, so all these ideas were from you guys. So let's pop this OEM cable on and see if it makes a difference. My goal with the clutch is to get it to where I can pull it in with one finger. Right now it's pretty stiff, it takes two fingers. So let's see if these parts make a difference. So I got the OEM cable on, got it all lubed up and everything. Seems a little bit better, maybe 10, 20% better. You can see it's, I can pull it in with my uh, index finger now. It's still pretty stiff, so I'm gonna try out these washers here. And I'll need to pull the clutch cover off to put these in.
All right, so I've got the pressure plate off the side and these washers go on the end of the shaft here. Zoom in a little bit. They go right here on the end of the rod and this rod runs through the engine and connects to the clutch arm on this side where the clutch cable attaches to. When you stack those washers on the push rod, it creates a better angle here for this arm. So coming over to this side, when I stack washers on the shaft, it's in turn gonna push the shaft through the engine. So with the rod further out, I'll show you what the angle looks like on the arm over here. Not the best angle, but when I push it in, you can see the arm is farther down and gives you a better angle. So I'm gonna put one washer on that shaft and see if it makes a difference. I'm just gonna pull this thing off and bring it over to the workbench. So the shaft has a little circlip on the end of it that will need to pop off. And the extra washer just slips on like that. Looks like we only have room for one extra washer. So hopefully that does the trick. Just gotta slide the circlip back on. All right, here's the verdict. Let's give it a shot. Ah, oh, it's a little better. Say another 10 or 20% better. So uh, still not quite as easy as the 125 clutch, but honestly, it's a uh, stiffer clutch. You know, it's for a 250 and it's got to hold more power. So understandably, it's going to be a little bit stiffer, but I think I can work with that. Yeah, and it should break in a little bit more too. Definitely uh, really easy with two fingers and still manageable with one finger. Oh, and one thing I forgot to talk about is why you have to add in the extra washer. It's because most aftermarket uh, clutch plate sets, like the one I have here, this is a Tusk one from Rocky Mountain. Um, they're thicker than OEM, and so it pushes that pressure plate farther out. So I got that idea from this guy on Instagram here. His name is TK Motorworks, and he's the one that sent me that idea. So thanks to him. So what's really cool about having a YouTube channel, especially with the reach that I have, is when I run into an issue, a lot of you guys chime in with great ideas. So uh, I'm just super stoked at the feedback you guys provide and just wanna say thank you for providing that cool community aspect. And that's what makes me so stoked to uh, help you guys out because I get a lot in return. And I just wanna say thank you for that. So uh, let's keep it up, keep the community vibes going and Let's just all help each other out because honestly that's my goal with the channel is to help you guys out and uh, hopefully you guys can spread the good word and tell your buddies about it and we can all just come together and help each other out. Now it's on to fixing the issues with this pipe. So I'm going to pull the pipe off and twist some of these mounts in the vise. This back mount here, I should be able to straighten that out. And then this lower mount, I'm going to twist that one slightly so it lines up. And for the Kickstarter issue, I'm gonna pull the inner clutch cover off and move the Kickstarter shaft one spline back. That way I can move this Kickstarter up a little bit. You can see when I have the Kickstarter up a little bit farther, it doesn't hit the pipe, but when I bring it down, it hits the pipe there. So if I can bring that Kickstarter up just a notch, that should fix the issue. After a little bit of tweaking, this back mount's pretty good. Not perfect, but it'll do. And for the front mount, I actually had to put a spacer in between the top bolt here. Not really what I wanted to do, but there was such a big gap here in uh, the pipe mount that that's what I had to do. So that will uh, do the trick. And now I'm gonna sort out this Kickstarter issue. So I'll have to pull the entire inner clutch cover off to get to that Kickstarter shaft. I ended up having to pull the entire clutch off to get to the Kickstarter, which is kind of a bummer. Got the clutch down here. But basically what we're gonna do here 
going to pull this Kickstarter shaft out of here. We are going to move the Kickstarter shaft back one spline. And how we're going to go about that is by taking this back gear, sliding it up, and rotating it one tooth. So this stopper piece right here hits on, goes right into that groove there. And that determines where the Kickstarter shaft rests. So by moving this gear one spline, it'll move the Kickstarter back one tooth or one spline. And hopefully that'll do it. So it looks like the Kickstarter is still hitting the pipe. So I'm gonna have to move this uh, Kickstarter shaft one more spline. All right, so I was able to find a happy medium here. It uh, clears the frame and doesn't really hit the pipe unless you really, really push it or force it toward the pipe. So I'm gonna put all this back together and uh, we can move on to the next project. All right, check this out. Got everything back together and the Kickstarter clears the pipe finally. Sweet. One more little fix I had was with these exhaust springs. So since they sit on the pipe when they're stretched out, over time, because of vibration, the spring will actually wear into the pipe. So what I did with these is I found some rubber hose, make sure it's uh, heat resistant, and I slid it over the springs, and uh, that should protect the pipe from wearing. And that's how it looks on the bike. Pretty easy fix. Now that I've got all the bugs worked out, time to install some more parts here. And actually, I realized I have an extra set of red radiator hoses have the set of uh, Mishimoto hoses on there already. And so I'm gonna give this set away. But before we do that, time to pick the winner for the uh, boys in exhaust flange. This was from the previous video. All right, right now we're just generating the comments on that last video. All I had you guys do was comment CR250 if you owned a CR250 and wanted that exhaust flange. So let's go ahead and pick a random winner. This is gonna pick a random comment, and hopefully you said CR250. No, I don't see that in there anywhere. Pick the next one. Gotta make sure someone actually has a uh, CR250. I don't wanna send this to someone that couldn't use it. Riding red gets you head. Ain't gonna argue with that. But uh, he didn't say CR250. Some of these comments are pretty comical. Greetings from Finland, heck yeah. All right, this one here better be it. Yep. All right, Nathan Torrance says CR250. So Nathan Torrance, send me a message on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is at Cameron Nimola, and I'll get your shipping address and send that flange over to you. Congrats, man. So back over to the radiator hoses. These fit 2002 to 2007, uh, CR250 only. And keep in mind, they are brand new, but they are a little bit sun faded. So they're a tiny bit pinkish, but I think they'll still look pretty cool. So to win these, all you have to do is comment down below, just like the uh, exhaust port, um, only if you have an 02 to 07 CR250. And let's, let's just pick something random. So write down in the comment section, um, make CR250s great again. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick one of your comments and ship you these radiator hoses for free. So good luck with that. Now let's go ahead and mount up some parts. We've got a set of ODI grips here. These are lock-on. Comes with the throttle tube. These things are pretty slick. Pick those up from Rocky Mountain. Got a kill switch here, Tusk brand. This mounts to the clutch perch. So frees up some room on the handlebars. And then we've got the stock throttle as well. So since I know a lot of you guys work on your own bikes and some of you probably wear gloves, I thought I would share uh, the absolute best gloves I found. Just got another shipment of them in. But uh, these things are super good. They just, they've got like a little texture on the fingers, so it works really good for working on bikes. Nice and thick. They don't just tear like disposable gloves. You can wear them time and time again. Um, always a good idea to wear gloves because, I mean, a lot of chemical exposure comes through your skin. You don't want to have dried out, calloused hands. So uh, these are the absolute best ones that I found. I'll link them down below for you guys. Let's go ahead and get these grips on. Definitely a big fan of these grips, and I'll show you why. 
So they literally just bolt onto the handlebars. You don't need to use any glue or um, wire tie. So uh, these things are locked onto the bars and not coming off. Like I said, comes with a throttle tube. This grip is like fused into the tube. So once again, that thing is stuck on there. So I'll show you how simple it literally is. You just put it right onto the bar. Ooh, these things are a little bit tight. Not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, the other ones I've had in the past, the slip right on and you tighten it down. So I might have to use a little help with this one. Man, that was really odd how tough it was to get this one on. But I guess that means it's never coming off. Now for the throttle side, looks like that slides on the bars pretty good. Gonna have to assemble this throttle housing. And before I pop the cable onto the throttle slide, I always like to have a little bit of grease on this thing just to make things work a little bit smoother. Now I wouldn't recommend putting grease in between the throttle tube and the handlebar. That'll attract a lot of dirt. And before you know it, you'll have like a really stiff and crunchy throttle. Sometimes you gotta fish the cable out from the housing with a set of, of uh, needle nose pliers here. Just gonna pop that cable right onto the tube. Then I'm gonna put the pulley in here just to test it out. I know these are like super small details, but every little detail adds up in my opinion. So how I like to set up my grips is I'll stand up on the bike, put my hand or my arm straight down, and where my fingers meet my palm, that's where I like to have the line for the half waffle. So on this grip, it's a little bit too far down. I need to rotate it back. And for the throttle side, let me get it somewhat close here. Put my hand straight down. And yeah, that line lines up pretty good with my uh, fingers and my palm. So I'm gonna leave this side good and I'll have to rotate that one back a little bit. And for this roller, you definitely wanna have some grease on the outer edge of it where the cable rides and on the inside as well. So the cable just goes right on the edge of it inside the little pocket or inside the groove. Put a little bit of grease on the roller as well. And I should have a smooth working throttle. Gonna pop this little plastic cover on. Got the screws. Now for the bottom cover. Damn it. Just gonna snug these up and then I'll tighten them down once I get the throttle in the perfect position. Let's get this boot on before we forget about that. Oh shit. How could I be so stupid? Look at this. The grommet, I didn't slide it onto the handlebar first, so I'm gonna have to take this thing apart. See guys, I'm actually not that smart. All right, I was able to slide the throttle off the end of the handlebar. Now I can get this grommet on. It wasn't too big of a deal. Now for throttle placement, you wanna make sure it clears the front brake. If you have it too far down, you'll notice it hits the front brake. You gotta rotate it up, and then you don't wanna have it sitting on the end of the handlebar. So usually what I'll do, push all the way in against the handlebar, and then bring it out just a little bit, maybe, I don't know, eighth inch or whatever, just so the throttle tube isn't rubbing on the end of the handlebar. And if that happens, you will have a sticky throttle. Let's go ahead and test this baby out. Should be a smooth throttle. Sweet. I love that snap back sound. Snap. Now I'm gonna set the cable free play. On a bike like this, I like to have the throttle just a little bit of play in it. I don't want it super tight to where it's really responsive. You know, maybe a 125, I'll have the uh, the throttle with no play in it. That way it's completely instant. But for this one, 
I'm gonna leave a little bit more play. So right there, I have the adjuster turned all the way in. I don't know if there's an adjustment on the cable anywhere. Maybe down here. Yeah, I'm gonna give it. Oh, that one's all the way in too. Guess I don't really have a choice. There's a little bit of play there. So I'm gonna call that good right there. You wanna make sure your adjusters are tightened up. If those things loosen up and back out, you're gonna be in for some serious whiskey throttle. So how I like to set up my levers is I'll sit down on the bike. Obviously I can't sit down quite yet on this one. There's no seat, but I'll have a straight wrist, straight elbow, and wherever that, that lever falls or lines up, that's where I'll put it. So I'll leave the lever a little bit loose on the bars, kind of just push it slightly until everything is straight. And then I'll have my hand all the way on the grip. I want the index finger to line up with the bend. So right there is where it should be. So that's good for the clutch, for the front brake. Let's go ahead and line everything up. Get that finger in the bend. The lever needs to move this way a little bit. Yeah, but that feels pretty good right there. Now you don't want to have these pinch bolts too tight or else the lever won't be able to rotate if need be. Say if you lay it over and it's too tight, it'll actually break the perch or the lever. Whereas if you have these just snugged up, this little plastic bushing in here allows for the lever and perch to rotate. So it does take some force to rotate it, but it's not super tight to where it's gonna break um, one of the pieces if you lay it over. For the kill switch, this piece actually bolts onto the clutch perch. It replaces this outer piece here, the rotator clamp. And call me crazy, but I always like to have it on this side, on the throttle side, as long as you have enough room, obviously. But for this one, it bolts right onto the master cylinder, so that'll work out perfect. On the other end, I will have to put some uh, connectors on here, though. I have a stock kill switch I can pull those connectors off of and splice them in. Man, that's pretty trick. What do you guys think? Should be pretty sweet having it on this side. So time to wire it up. We've got the wire leading down to here. Looks like it needs to run through the fork and it connects to these connectors right here. See if we have enough wire for that. Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna cut the ends off the stock kill switch and splice them into the new kill switch. Just gonna use a set of wire strippers here to strip away the outer shell of the wiring. And then I've got these butt connectors here to connect the old plugs to the new kill switch. Just gonna twist up this wire, slide the butt connector over it, and then crimp it. And now to connect these to the new kill switch, and twist up these wires, get them ready to splice. And it's always a good idea to use some heat shrink tubing and let's see, this is a solid black wire. I'm gonna connect it to the solid black on this kill switch, and it's ready to crimp together. And then of course, whenever you do a crimp, you wanna make sure it holds. Just tug on it slightly. All right, that one looks good to go. Just got this other one now. All right, now to shrink the tubing, onto the wires and protect them. The basic concept of this uh, heat shrink tubing is to keep water out, so that way the connections don't corrode. I'm gonna use a heat gun for this. So it should shrink right over that connection and make a nice, clean seal. Man, that's clean. Now it's only a matter of plugging these wires in and we will be done. Stripe goes to stripe, black goes to black. 
chuck it in here with the clip just to keep it out of the way. And that's it. Looks pretty crazy having a button over here. You see race teams and they have buttons all over their handlebars. I should tell people that this is like a NOS button or something. They're out riding and they're like, huh, let's see what this does. And they hit it and it's just like, bleh, and kills the bike. I'm gonna call it a day right there. Now the reason why I haven't started assembling the back of the bike, like the airbox, subframe, shock, all that, is because I'm contemplating doing some coatings on the shock shaft and also the fork tubes. So like a DLC coating or a tie nitrate coating. Um, I gotta figure that out. And then another thing I'll be working on soon, come over here and show you guys, carbon fiber. So this is all the essentials to do carbon fiber. Never done it before, so I'll be teaching myself and teaching you guys at the same time. So this is the actual carbon fiber mat here. Got all the epoxies, uh, films, all that stuff. So keep an eye out for that. Super excited to learn how to do carbon fiber. And so let me know down in the comment section what pieces you would like to see me do up in carbon fiber. I appreciate you guys watching the video and like always if you enjoyed the video or learned something new all I ask of you guys is to share it with your buddies you know make a post on Instagram share it in your story share it on Facebook or just tell someone in person that's really all I uh, all I want in return so till next time keep it prime